Hello, everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce our presenter today, Dr. Sergey Maganov. Sergey is the president of NTMDT Development and R&D subsidiary that was established for the development of novel applications and capabilities using NTMDT microscopes. He received a doctorate in physics and mathematics from the Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology. Sergey has published over 200 peer-reviewed papers, one book, and 15 book chapters. And now I give the word to Sergey, and we are starting our webinar. Good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning, uh, afternoon or evening. It depends where you guys are located. And it's my pleasure uh, to be here uh, in Tempe, Arizona, and provide you with some recent developments which we've done in uh, developing the frequency imaging and frequency modulation modes. Uh, in our attempt to provide a researcher with the most advanced set of IFM modes uh, for a comprehensive characterization of materials, we have added frequency imaging, frequency modulation modes to our microscopes. And this is the subject of today's webinar. My talk will address Okay, uh, my talk will address several related topics as shown in an agenda of my presentation and uh, we will go just uh, step by step. Uh, first of all, I uh, uh, want to show you the, uh, that atomic force microscopy is a collection of uh, different uh, modes. First of all, is contact mode, and then oscillatory, uh, resonant and non-resonant mode. In uh, that oscillatory mode, the intermittent con contact between the tip and the samples are made either at the frequency near the resonant frequency of the probe, or at much lower frequency than the probe resonance. And this is differentiate resonant and non-resonant modes. Uh, as I mentioned, I will be uh, mostly focused on oscillatory resonant mode, and then I will put amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, phase imaging, frequency imaging. But also, in some cases, I will get the data from the hybrid mode uh, to make more clear what we see in the images. Now, uh, I want to give you some basic uh, introduction, some theoretical approach. And uh, um, first of all, I will tell you that the interaction between the uh, tip and sample uh, in the IFM probe uh, can be described by the Euler-Bernoulli equation. And then the solution of this equation can be obtained in the asymptotic uh, 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 KBM uh, asymptotic uh, approach. In this case, uh, the solution are presented as a two equation. This is two equation we're showing on, on the screen. The first equation, which has the uh, difference between the approach and retract uh, force, that's related to dissipating. Because we, in every cycle, our tip come uh, to the sample and then leave the sample. And if this force is a different, then we have and not only uh, elastic integration, we actually have in elastic integration, we have a dissipation. And this equation relates the pro parameters like uh, frequency, quality factor, amplitude, and phase with the ZC. This is defined the topography of the sample. And then, as I see, 
this is the forces. Forces, of course, can be of different nature, can be mechanical, can be electric, and so on. It's a quite general description. But in case, in our case, we're dealing mostly with mechanical deep sample force interactions. Now I want to tell you the following, that this is equation, they have four variables. And this is topography frequency, which we express through the, uh, this uh, G capital uh, parameter, which sh shows the difference between actual frequency and resonance frequency, amplitude and phase. This is the four variables, but we have only two equations. Therefore, in order to solve this equation, you need to fix two of that uh, parameters and solve uh, and find the other two. But also I can uh, put your attention that topography is usually, the topography of sample is usually the variable that we want uh, to find out. And then therefore we have only three uh, parameters. Uh, this is like frequency, amplitude, and phase. And we can fix a couple of them. Uh, and this you can do in three different ways. In, in uh, this actually gives you three different IFM modes and which is described here. If we will fix the frequency, uh, this is parameter G and amplitude, and then in this case we have amplitude modulation and also with phase imaging because we can get a Z, uh, C topography and also we can get the phase signal. And this is the uh, most common mode, which is introduced as a tapping mode in the, I think, 1993. And we're using that uh, in many, many applications. The other mode, when uh, we get, when we fix, uh, let's say, uh, phase at, let's say, at 90 degrees, and then the uh, shift of the frequency or frequency G, then it calls frequency modulation mode. And this is mode also quite known. People are using mostly in vacuum where the high quality factor of the cantilever may difficulties uh, to use amplitude modulation. But then this frequency modulation also start to spread in the ambient and uh, under liquid conditions. And there are several groups are working with frequency modulation, particular and atomic scale in, in water, looking at the biological substance. There is a third mode, which get when we again fix the uh, phase and also we do the amplitude. Therefore, we can call it the amp modulation because we use amplitude in this case as a parameter uh, to control the, uh, to learn about the topography. But it's important that this is different from amplitude modulation with phase imaging because here we uh, fix the uh, amplitude, uh, subpoint amplitude at the uh, frequency of the cantilever usually prior to the uh, interaction with the tip. In the case of amplitude modulation with the frequency imaging, we are actually, mm, by fixing uh, phase at 90 degrees, we're always following the uh, probe in resonance, which is shifted due to sample interaction, and we are using the amplitude, set point amplitude at that particular frequency for the uh, imaging, uh, for the imaging of topography, and also we can get the uh, frequency signal and get the frequency map. Therefore, we call it AMPI. This in case of the amplitude modulation with phase imaging, and then amplitude modulation with frequency imaging, you call it AMFI. These three modes also described in these tables, and you see we're using lock-in amplifier, usually for detect the amplitude of a particular frequency, and then we're using PLL. This is a phase uh, locked loop uh, uh, for uh, fixing the phase at 90 degrees C. This is for both for the amplitude modulation with frequency imaging, and this is both also for, for frequency modulation. This is our modes, and this is the kind of full set of the resonant oscillatory IFM modes that we now provided in our instruments. There are a couple of things I want to tell you about that uh, oscillatory modes. There are similarity between, between this modes which we use uh, uh, like amplitude modulation PI where we are stuck on this on this on the near the resonance frequency and also this FM frequency modulation uh, and also AM, AM FI where we are uh, trying to uh, keep the uh, phase at 90 degrees level. 
You see, this is the equation which related cosine of the phase in the amplitude modulation, and this is, again, this is uh, not dissipative, but this is conservative part where we have a sum of the uh, force approach and retract. And also, you see the expression for the shift of the frequency, which is here, G is equal to frequency shift, is also quite similar. There are the similarity of these modes. That means they they dealing with more or less the same parameters uh, or the same uh, parameters of tip sample force interactions. But this is similarities, but there are also the specifics in this mode. For example, in expression of the amplitude, which come in this frequency modulation uh, and also an AMFI uh, case, we see that the amplitude will can be actually increase because we uh, can bring more energy to the to the tip because if we want to keep the probe at the resonance frequency was changing with the tip sample interaction. Of course, even we can get this increase of the amplitude if our dissipation was zero or, 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 or smaller. But typically, this is dissipation part, and this is the energy part in the case we define the amplitude of the uh, oscillatory mode with the, freq uh, with the phase uh, fixed at 90 degrees C. In general, dissipation is one of the important parameters which we can learn, and this is the here with, with general formula that the energy dissipated is this uh, over the period is between these different positions of the tips, and then this is the difference of uh, approach and retract force. Then this uh, general formula can be used either for amplitude modulation phase imaging mode. In this case, we have this expression with sinus, uh, sinus of uh, phases involved. Uh, also in the case of the fixed uh, phase at 90 degrees C, we have expressions for the frequency modulation. I dot it in, in, in the red oval here. And also for the AMFI mode, where uh, this is questioned below. Why I dot it one? Because we will use that for frequency modulation dissipation. And I uh, want to put your attention that there is the amplitude here. It means, uh, in many cases, people simplify saying that dissipation is just a change of the amplitude. It's more, much more uh, different. This is not linear relations, and you see this is a correct expression for the dissipation and frequency modulation mode. That uh, we will take into account, and now we'll see what we get in the experiments with that. Also, there is a, a other phenomena which people uh, might don't like, especially in, amp in amplitude modulation mode, and this is phenomena where the suddenly uh, phase uh, value jumping between the two positions, and also it makes the uh, kind of uh, artifact spots in the height images in the topography. And this is related to the fact that in, in the, uh, if you take some potential where we have attractive and repulsive forces like Lennox-Jones is most uh, common potential for this purpose, and then this calculation, which performed by Sergey Belikov, actually, this is what I'm telling. This is most of the product of the efforts of our uh, uh, software architect, Sergey Belikov, who was developing that already more than 10 years, all these approaches, all the use of this uh, asymptotic approach and all these uh, derivatives, derivations. Now, here, of course, the bifurcation and amplitude phase imaging is related. There are two, you see green and black, there are two solutions of the equation if you look uh, dependent phase of the amplitude. Therefore, in some cases, there are kind of jump, let's say, green in our convention where for you define the phase which goes from the uh, negative through the zero to the positive through the resonance. It's actually different from the case of the, let's say, Bruca, and in their case, phase go from the positive and going through the zero to the down. Therefore, phase contrast in our instruments is, might be different from uh, the one which people present, let's say, in the Bruca instruments. But here, green is uh, attractive uh, branch, and this is repulsive branch. There are in some position, at some amplitude, at some set point amplitude, there are kind of two solutions, and tip can jump between these two. The situation is uh, interesting because if we go to the other modes, and uh, as we see from the equation above, there are some uh, definite similarities in the 
expressions of the frequency and the phase. Then uh, Sergei Belikov simulated that and he found the same uh, bifurcation phenomenon. Therefore, I think in this sense there is no much difference. However, there are a couple of papers where people are talking uh, and dealing with this kind of uh, frequency modulation and frequency imaging modes, and they actually pointed out without any uh, consideration based on their analysis of the false curves that uh, I think uh, in this frequency modulation and, and, and frequency imaging mode there is no bifurcation. I think we disagree on that and actually we have the experiments which showing that this is possible, but this is maybe for the next time. And now I will continue consideration of this theoretical basis of these modes and then I will tell you something about what, uh, how we can explain the changes of the frequency in frequency imaging, for example, and how we can relate that to some sample properties. In this case, we're using this as equation, like uh, we describe uh, conservative interaction between uh, tip and the samples, and then there is general equation how the shift of the frequency related to the force. And if you use simple model of Hertz, uh, it's is elastic model, and also consider situation, this is this kind of swing of the tip when it comes to the sample, which is kind of red, uh, red box uh, on the bottom, and there are some, in the, some cases there are this deformation, this is how we're learning about the mechanical properties. And this is, it means, if the swings of the tip apex during oscillation become so that the it's penetrate below the level of the sample go in the motivation, then becomes negative and that we can take this negative as a deformation, put for the Hertz uh, formula, put Hertz formula in this expression and then getting something which show that delta F sh shift of the frequency proportion to the, uh, the modulus of the samples. In this case, I think we have a hint uh, in, the, in, in kind of in comparison or in contrary to the phase imaging where phase people are kind of designed definitely to one of the sample properties and they say this is kind of dissipation but this is not very instructive to, to analyze the uh, images but here we have more direct uh, match between shift of the frequency in the models. However, we should also concede that this is we're still in the limitation of simple model and, and life can be more complicated. Okay, now we go to practical implementation of frequency imaging and frequency modulation. This is what we have. Actually, this uh, realization, we have this schematic showing that inside of both uh, implementation, we have PLL with amplitude and phase calculation. This is a block. And this is part of our new controller, which will appear, I think, within next month on, on the market where we realize PLL and where we can do all this uh, uh, new uh, mm, amplitude modulation or a uh, new uh, oscillatory modes. In this case, in the frequency imaging, what we have, we're getting from PLL, we have signal of amplitude which goes to the server, and from that signal we're getting the height image. And then we have also uh, uh, extracting the shift of the frequency at which we measure this amplitude. And this gives you the frequency image. And this is for high density polyethylene, this kind of representative images obtained in the uh, frequency imaging mode. In the case of the frequency modulation, we use the same kind of uh, electronics. And in this case, PLL, we're using the uh, change of the frequency due to tip sample interaction for the servo or the topography, and this gives us height image. And then we have the amplitude change, we can put in the amplitude image. I want to warn you, this is still amplitude image, and if you want to talk about dissipation, you should be doing it very carefully because amplitude is not related to dissipation uh, in linear way, and uh, actually in the next uh, development, we will put the true dissipation channel which is calculated channel using the formula which I showed before. Anyhow, this is how we implement that. And we uh, do some research on this bus mode, trying to find these values. And this, the results I will be showing in the next slides. Let's start with the frequency modulation mode. 
And uh, when we're looking at the new modes, and uh, I have quite a bit of experience of that, and uh, one of the things which bother me uh, in new modes, how we can compare this capability with existing modes. First, I will give you some basic uh, data obtained with frequency modulation mode. Actually, uh, here we can do imaging, as I check on the rough samples. On the left, you see this crystal height of that uh, center of the frequency uh, of the crystal of the ultra-long uh, alkanes is around 500 nanometers above the surface. See, we can do that, frequency modulation. Of course, we can do that uh, imaging on the uh, smaller scale. This is molecular scales where we have C36H74 alkane layer on the HOPG on the graphite, and the, we see this lamella with alternative contrast, which is 4.5 nanometers wide. Actually, that frequency modulation is mostly used for the high uh, uh, resolution uh, imaging. And uh, we look on that a little bit more broader. We want to see also how we can apply for different type of materials, also how you can that use for compositional mapping and so on so forth. So, uh, one of the examples we started, and of course you would change the, the frequency, the set point frequency, you go from attractive to repulsive mode, and also you can get to the uh, net attractive mode where you still has the negative shift, but uh, interaction can be partly already repulsive. And that's, this is image of the 500 nanometer on site uh, morphology of SBS, to block up polymer styrene, butadiene, and styrene. And you see that the, this is a gentle imaging with going to the higher, you know, to the repulsive force, we see some deformation of the structures, and also we still even with the negative, but not as negative as before, as initial one, we see some deformation of the structure. It means there are some forces involved, and Force is also the issue when we uh, look on different systems. And using uh, amplitude modulation for a long time, I found out there are some systems which we cannot really examine with the amplitude modulation on very small scales. And one of these sample is fluoral cane, uh, fluoral cane assemblies on mica. Here they were imaged in the frequency modulation mode. And we see we start on the large scale around uh, 2 micron and then go to the 500 nanometer. You see the height images obtained in frequency modulation mode. They are kind of intact when you scan for a long time, but typically what you have in amplitude modulation, you go to smaller scale and you start to rip the, the structures. And this actually happened with frequency modulation as well. And you see this 200 nanometer images on the left center and the right, and this is just done in continuous scans on this area. You see there is no any thermal drift because uh, I don't know if people were or not, but we uh, do all the images in thermostabilized cabinet, which, which allows the imaging on small 140 nanometer scales, whatever, continuously for hours without shift of the sample. And you see in this series, we see that the force is still present, even in force modulation, even we, we do in the uh, attractive mode. Now, that's kind of, I was not very happy with that, but uh, this is a life. Then I look on another system. Another system is ultra-long alkanes on, on, uh, on HEPG, on the graphite. They also have lamella structures, and the, on the top you see the images done typically under the modulation mode. Whenever I try to minimize forces, minimize amplitude, I still see that there are top layers are somehow in the sequential uh, sequential images, they kind of modified. It means the tip always pushing material which weakly bonded to the surface. And then my hope was that frequency modulation go into smaller amplitude and might give me more uh, capabilities to go to low force imaging. And this is, I try on this system. Indeed, there is some definite success. When we look on the one micron area, and, and you see, at first, with an amplitude modulation mode, we see there are some changes as described above, but you see there are these lamella mm, uh, ribbons lying over the surface. And this particular region with two dots, like two contamination particles, we watch, and this area watch as we switch from amplitude modulation to frequency modulation. And the frequency modulation in repulsive, in attractive regime, 
uh, I will start imaging, and you still, with the time, I start to see that this area, which uh, dotted in this uh, red uh, dotted oval, is start to change, and that change would have seen more layers are formed on the top. It means always there is some disordered material around uh, the surface, and TIP is pushing that. But you see, if we go to more gentle mode, frequency modulation, we see that some of this material come to the surface and arrange in the lamellar layers. This is what uh, I like, and I think this is one of the issues, because if we were able to go to very low forces, we see huge amount of structures we never see in the regular FM imaging. I think this is one of the hopes I have with this model. OK, let's go next. Now we can talk about this amplitude uh, signal in frequency modulation, which related directly or in some kind of uh, relations to the dissipation. What we can do, we can either measure height and measure the amplitude, or we can use uh, the AGC. Uh, this is uh, the way how we can, through this uh, automatic gain control, we can actually uh, provide uh, more power to the system in order to uh, compensate the drop of the amplitude due to the uh, uh, sample uh, dissipation. And then we have this alternative signal. Here we see the fluoroalkanes have higher amplitude. And that's a little bit of a surprise to us. High amplitude means that they are more elastic than, than the uh, other not ordinarily a line on the mic. And this is actually supported by uh, AGC signal, which uh, show that you need to provide less power to these uh, domains in order to, to keep the dissipation at the same level. Also, we've done another system. This is polystyrene polybutadiene blend. And this we've done with other methods. And we know that the polystyrene domains are elevated. And the matrix is most from the polybutadiene. And indeed, here, the amplitude image show the very uh, different contrast, which show that the polystyrene has brighter amplitude. Therefore, it has less dissipation. It's more kind of elastic in response than the matrix was formed by a polybutadiene. And this is showing that the amplitude modulation, if we work carefully uh, with this uh, dissipation channel or with amplitude or this true dissipation, which we'll add in the next version of software, then this actually can be another tool to study the, the surfaces and study even getting the approach to the viscoelastic properties as well. Therefore, I think this kind of things we are have in mind now. Besides, of course, people like to use frequency modulation for atomic scale images, and we'll try as well. But another thing, force control and also dissipation as, as another channel for the composition. OK, then uh, this is uh, uh, examples done with frequency modulation. I will switch now to the example done with frequency imaging. And of course, we can start with the high resolution imaging. We can do that. And again, this is kind of trial or mm, a sample of F uh, alkane with 4.5 nanometer lamellas on the surface. We see also some defects here. But height and frequency imaging are really reproducing this mode as, as in other modes. And I think uh, we can further explore that and maybe to find some uh, difference with amplitude modulation. But I'm not particularly sure about that. Uh, then, in the next application, we start to look on the uh, heterogeneous system. And that's SBS, a three-block copolymer again. And here we know that we are doing, uh, because amplitude is our set point for both frequency imaging and the phase imaging mode. And uh, you see here, we see that at, at the same set point, we have more or less similar height images, but the frequency and phase image is quite different. And phase shows already much more contrast related to difference of local mechanical properties of the uh, blocks of the polybutadiene and polystyrene. However, phase of these particular conditions, which is gentle imaging conditions in uh, phase imaging, they don't show, they kind of show only derivative of the height. It's not really 
different controls. That was kind of questioning. One of the thought about that, that uh, as I mentioned, there are some specific features, maybe in frequency imaging, when we go to the resonance sometime, and this is with elastic case, the amplitude can be effectively higher than that, and therefore we uh, already in some different force uh, type sample interaction compared to the uh, uh, phase imaging. Anyhow, this is one of the first ideas, but let's look on other examples. Now again, example here, another block of polymer. This is again similar to SBS, but ethylene butylene, uh, the blocks. Here again, IFM, PI, phase imaging, at this particular set point I'm using here, we're using more or less topography of the sample and some hints on the microphase separation of the phase. However, if you go to the frequency uh, imaging then the height shows similar features. You see this trend, this is this one. And, uh, but here we see a definite contrast related to different blocks. And then we also done a hybrid mode imaging on the sample. We show that the similar bright domains at frequency correspond to high elastic modulus domain in the elastic modulus. Therefore, this kind of confirm, at least in this sample, that the contrast of the frequency is more related to the, to the modulus, local modulus of this um, uh, of the material. Now this is one example. Let's go to the next one. Here I took a linear low-density polyethylene. This is uh, one of the polyethylenes where uh, structures are semi-crystalline. There are lamella aggregates and there are a lot of amorphous material. Usually I've done a lot of the studies and the phase imaging. Usually if you do very gentle, you see your set point close to the free amplitude, then you see only the uh, topography profile without much details. And then you need, in order to start to see both in, in height and the phase, uh, structures, lamella structures, which are kind of hidden in this amorphous surrounding, you need to drop your set point at least half, and then you start to see something at least here in the height. In the case of phase imaging, again, even at this very low, even we can do set point much higher than in the case of PI here, 11 nanometers. This is the lowest uh, I can do the imaging stable over the surface. Here I can do at least 12 nanometers related to 13 nanometers original uh, initial one. Then both frequency and height immediately show me the structure. Plus, if I go drop, uh, go to the other interaction, drop a little bit, we see the same structures. And then on the next slide, I will see have, you see this amplitude phase imaging show me finally at, at, at a set point, which is less than a half of the free amplitude, show me the uh, structures, lamella structures in the height and the phase image. Here we see also an invert of the structure, which might be reflected the bifurcation. But you see, the uh, if we go to the similar high force conditions in amplitude frequency imaging, we see both of these structures. And then here I took the deformation from the hybrid mode, showing that indeed the bright spots here have lower deformation. That means this is a higher modulus material compared to these uh, uh, regions where I have a bright uh, sports in the deformation, the, the high deformation, this is amorphous regions. This is, uh, it's actually a surprise to me that whatever do uh, set point settings in the uh, phase and the frequency imaging, you see both type of structures and that's a little bit a situation more complicated in the phase imaging. Okay, let's go to another sample. In this case, this is a sample for LDPE. They're not linear low density, but just low density polyethylene, where the uh, lamella structures is, is, is not so spread it over the surface as and not form the aggregates as we see in the LLDPE before. Here again, this is phase imaging and this is the frequency imaging. Initially, you see we have some kind of granular structures with some hints on the lamella structures, and typically phase at these conditions here. Uh, set point 8 uh, to 10 nanometers, and then uh, here set point 9 to 10. Again, we can go with this to the higher set points. But anyhow, the image is quite similar. Actually, I didn't show either phase image or frequency image for this uh, height because they are 
more or less featureless. They just show overall stuff, but not very distinctively the uh, structure. But situation changes if we drop the set point. In the case of the uh, phase imaging, we start to see that there are some lamellas appear even on the height profile. And then you see the DACA, which is uh, in our convention of uh, NTMDT uh, phase. This is DACA as high density uh, material usually, and this is the individual lamellas, DAC1 of the uh, polyethylene in, in this amorphous and semi-crystalline morphology. With the, uh, here, you see with the much smaller set, with much higher set point compared to the uh, phase imaging, in frequency imaging, we nicely see this is structure still uh, don't change much from the uh, height and the uh, higher uh, set point conditions, but frequency already show all these nice lamellas uh, in the frequency map. This is a definite difference, and I, and I think they show that these modes are different conditions uh, show slightly differences, and that uh, can be uh, used for the uh, compositional mapping. Interesting enough, I look also in phase imaging, and this is what typically we're doing. This is the lamella uh, strips on the surface of the. Um, uh, this is ultra long alkane C242 with this lamella size here, and also here they're much smaller around 28 nanometers, and this is on HOPG. They really molecules lying either perpendicular at some inclination, and actually we go to the height images at higher forces. Then we see that there are some, some uh, structures showing that most likely the, the chains in the lamellas are tilted with respect to the edges of the lamella. But also, we, we look on these materials, and I play with the forces, and here I found that with f frequency imaging, we can do uh, quite gentle imaging. You see in, here in height, we don't see much heterogeneities, yet we see the heterogeneous in the frequency map. We can feel that uh, even, and uh, there is no any, any indication on these structures in the height image. Uh, then, uh, this kind of uh, show again the differences when you look at different uh, tip sample uh, levels, tip force levels. Then, even here, this is another frequency imaging image. That's I really complicates, and, and, and I don't understand that, but you see it shows something very interesting. If in the height, and this is kind of high set points, in the height, we see the, the topography of the samples and the frequency maps show very different features. There are a lot of the contrasts which are not distinctively seen in the height, but it already shows you the uh, differences in, uh, in local properties through the frequency map. Also, when you increase, drop the set point, we start to see these features in the height, frequency become less uh, with less contrast. That means, yes, frequency imaging giving something uh, different than amplitude modulation and phase imaging in, in uh, different conditions, but we also add that to the, to the suite of the modes which use for the uh, imaging of uh, complex materials where there are a lot of components, and we know that in many cases with frequency imaging, we get a contrast which we can uh, more definitely design to the to the elastic models, or local operation elastic models, and this is different from the phase image. It means now uh, I want to summarize the the subject of today's seminar, saying that we come to the conclusion. First, important thing is that we can provide for our instruments the whole set of the resonant oscillatory mode. That means two amplitude modulation mode with phase imaging and frequency imaging, frequency modulation mode. That means that we want our customers to be fully equipped to do their research on the, on the top level. Second, uh, I want to say that frequency modulation mode we use in some application. Actually, for me, the fact that using a purgated surface was somehow 
uh, novice one because uh, usually what people do with fractional modulation, they look at atomic uh, level structures, they improve imaging and properties on atomic scale. Mm -hmm. Here uh, we done look more broader on that, and and I think uh, we know that we can try and to look on these weak bonded structures as demonstrated. Also, as I show the dissipation, we can get this dissipation channel. We can also use that for compositional imaging, not only on the small scales, on the larger scales where a lot of samples has variations. As regarding frequency imaging and amplitude modulation mode. Then we show that it shares uh, similar and sometimes different capability for composition mapping of heterogeneous materials as we compare with the phase imaging. And in many cases, we can give uh, correlation between frequency changes and elastic models of material. Of course, this is just the beginning. Uh, what I show you, the results, this is uh, results, I don't know, maybe the last four, uh, eight weeks of research with these modes. But of course, we are not stopping on that. We are want to implement that, to use that for tuning fork application, which is quite interesting. Also, we can go to different eigen modes, because this is just frequency, a different frequency. And also, a lot of these things, as in past, we use uh, the amplitude modulation and also phase uh, modulation for the FM-based electric measures, like single pass. Kelvin or the electric measurements, and I think that also has a good potential to get the complete set of the IFM modes just in one instrument. And this is a goal, and I think we are on the way to bring our customers the, the top product. Of course, this is work of our team, and I appreciate John Alexander, who was under electronic development, Sergey Belikov, completely uh, responsible for the of the formulas I was showing. Marco is very helpful in, 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 in uh, any aspect of the um, experimental work here. And uh, I want just to say also enjoy their, their everyday company and their work. And uh, by that, I will thank you for your attention. I will be happy to answer some of your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sergey. And I think we still have some time to answer a couple of questions. And the first question will be the following. Uh, most of the images in frequency modulation were acquired on uh, pretty flat samples. Uh, but what about imaging of the rough samples? Oh, but this is uh, actually mentioned. The, the rough samples, there was two rough samples in my presentation. One was the... Uh, the uh, crystal, pyramidal crystal of the uh, ultra-long alkane C2242H486, uh, which pyramid is 500 nanometer above the surface. This is one sample. Other sample is the uh, polystyrene polybutadiene blend. Here, the, the roundish uh, features which were bright in the height image there around 100 150 nanometers. At least on these samples, we can do that. And uh, the trick is just to go to the higher gains and, and to, to reduce your uh, scanning rate a little bit because that's you can un understand that the feedback going on the longer linear trace when it go from the uh, from the valley to the hills and so on and so on. But this is not a big problem with our uh, imaging in this thermal stabilized environment where we uh, have uh, the change of the sample temperature in hours is within the below uh, one hundredth of a degree. That means everything stable. We can do uh, in any modes. We can spend hours on, on the same place, do different modes, different studies. and and go to the corrugated uh, images as well. That's that's not not the issue. Uh, thank you, Sergey. Uh, the next question was: uh, What are the main advantages of frequency modulation in comparison to amplitude modulation mode? Uh, first of all, uh, frequency modulation. Uh, this is actually the the question I asked the guy who is using frequency modulation, the Japanese group. There, I think in principle, there are no much differences in information you can get with both modes. There are 
some things which more convenience uh, related, let's say, and uh, I think this clear dissipation channel, which uh, will be very useful because this is a uh, uh, look for me more straightforward related to dissipation compared to the phase imaging. That one of advantages, I would say. Also, I expect then with a better, the force control might be improved. And that's what I, I give you one example where uh, my hopes that with frequency modulation, I can go uh, to much uh, smaller forces and get uh, images of the weakly bound structures to the surface. This is what one of the goals of pursuing. And of course, there are one. Ex, ex, exclusive uh, use of uh, frequency modulation and that uh, each instrument should have it because this is a use with the tuning forks and, and I uh, uh, will be very excited when we'll implement that for tuning forks and then get that because this is the only uh, mode it means frequency imaging that can use with the combination of tuning forks. Uh, thank you, Sergey. And uh, there were also a few questions uh, from people asking how they can get all the mentioned capabilities to their existing systems. That's a good question. I think this is what we are discussing now at the company because this is, as I mentioned, that all capabilities is just a new controller. It means uh, we have this hybrid controller which uh, provide the additional capabilities to our system systems. That will be just next generation of hybrid controller. And but details how we can uh, provide to the customers is probably need to be discussed by our sales force. And and and, and uh, this is a little beyond my control at the moment, but. My my job just to show that with this new developments we can get uh, new data and we can apply, uh, develop new applications. And the last question for today: uh, What is the order of how much the force may be decreased compared to amplitude modulation mode? That's a very good uh, question. Uh, uh, we now has only relative imaging, just using the same structures can we see image with this stuff. As regarding the theoretical estimates, I think this is not impossible because for phase imaging we already have, and if somebody interested, we can provide you free of charge this uh, FM uh, simulator where we can, uh, people can uh, get the idea about the peak force in the tapping mode and it means in the amplitude modulation with phase imaging the same uh, version of the software we can uh, theoretically uh, calculate the forces through the uh, um, uh, in the force modulation mode as, as, as possible is just time and, and willingness of circuit Delica, who is a developer of this software, but I think that is doable. We can get in in due course these uh, theoretical estimates as well. But at the moment, we are. Uh, my goal is try on the samples which I see where I uh, moving the structures uh, away from the surface in embedded modulation mode, and I have a, a number of samples in, in my past. I want to apply the frequency uh, modulation to this kind of samples and, and practically to see can we get that. And uh, with, again, we can do that on the same location. We can just switch modes from one to another, not leaving the same location. And that because of this uh, thermal sta uh, thermally stable environment. And then we can do that. And I think this, uh, of course, this is an important question and we will try to address in the application. But as I mentioned, we just uh, spend maybe four for a little bit more weeks on, 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 on the uh, applications and uh, we will uh, get to this question. Uh, thanks again, Sergey. And uh, we have now come to the end of uh, the webinar for today. Uh, thank you all for attending and please check our website for notification of upcoming webinars and events. 
and please do take uh, the time to complete the survey uh, as we value your input. Uh, thanks again and have a great day. Goodbye.